Okay, so here, let's come back here. So this is the third in the series, uh, walking you through how to set up your local dev. And the last step is gonna be the Git workflow. And so this step takes everything we've done beforehand and actually gives you the workflow that you need to do for this class. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut that out just because my Windows virtual environment sometimes gets a little fernickety. Is that a word? I'm not sure. So um, this, the following things are going to be one-time uh, setups that you do. And the first thing you're going to do is create a git ignore file. And you'll need to do this for every, oh, I noticed this happened earlier, for every repo that you have, you'll need to actually do that. So um, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and just do a copy real quick. And I've given you an example here, uh, a link that takes you to an example of what a git ignore file is. And it's probably unlike any file you've ever created because it starts with a, a dot. Git ignore is actually the name of it, one word all together. And this is what needs to go in there. Well, I'm going to show you because you're going to need to do it for both, um, just how to do it. And I actually have done it here in the private repo. So I'm going to actually do it in the public one because you'll need to do it for whichever repos you have created. Uh, again, remember that these directories are actually repos that are connected um, are, uh, connected to GitHub. Okay, so I did it here and that's actually when my computer decided it didn't, didn't like what I was doing. So I'm gonna do it again. So I'm gonna create a file. I'm going to do it. Now, this is important. I'm going to do it in the root of the repo, okay? I can't do it in the root of all of them because it has to be this particular file has to go in here. So I'm going to do .git, okay? And then you type I-G-N-O-R-E, got git ignore. And again, because I already have this set up, I'm just going to copy it and you can do the same. Control C copy this and then come over here and then control V and paste it. Now there's one additional line that I add for those of you taking JavaScript or Node. And even if you're taking 82 or Python, it doesn't hurt. Um, but this is not uh, part of what you're going to do. But Node uh, underscore modules is what we use when we install third party packages. So that's also something we need. Okay. All right. So again, to create the file, you can copy and paste from the link I gave you. You do need to do it for each repo. And now what we're going to do is do a little setup. So remember how I told you those uh, commands that we just did were one time. Well, this is also one time. And what this is going to be is going to be a, and I'm going to copy this again, because it just makes life easier. I could type those commands in and it's good that you do it. And I'll show you an easy way to do this right? But in this case, I'm just going to right click and it's going to say the username. So now this, I believe this one can be done because uh, it's for your whole system, right? I believe this is true. So I'm going to type in Rio Waller. It's uh, double, uh, double quotes, uh, your actual name that you used on GitHub. And now I'm going to up arrow and this time I'm going to do email. Okay. I guess I didn't have to paste the second time just because I knew what it was going to ask for. And this time I'm going to actually use the email example uh, that I use for GitHub. Okay. And it's just what this does is it connects your local system. Um, it's already connected because you saw we logged in before, but this actually gives it a little more uh, information when you're doing those Git pushes and just locally, it's good to have it. So the last command in that list actually is just this, which is doing a dash dash list, which is really just showing that you set those things up correctly and you're good to go. So remember the commands that we just did, you do need to do the uh, username and the email. And now I'm going to do a clear to get rid of it because that um, now ends the part that we needed to do, which we were doing one time. So now the following is the actual workflow itself. Okay. So we modify files locally, which by the way, we already have because we actually added um, the get ignore, but I'm going to add another file just so you can see that as well. Okay, because a very common file actually will modify the file. How, how about this? So I'm going to open up um, and I'm going to today's date, which is 
the soma. Okay. Now I actually don't need to put that because that's actually something that happens normally. Um, uh, so on there, so maybe that's not the best thing, but I'll just, I, in this case, I'm just changing something. Okay. So I've actually done, in this case, I've done a couple of changes. And so like I showed you before, based on the way I have my folder open, I need to go into the directory. I want to now make changes or push changes to GitHub. Cause remember all the stuff I'm doing right now are, is local. Okay. So now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go do CD Rio FCCW and I'm going to go to private. Cool. And again, I can tell in my directory structure that that is indeed the case there. And now I can do the first command in our list, which is get status. Okay. And actually what's cool here is it shows me I have a change that I did to the readme file and I have an untracked file, which is totally awesome. So first thing I'm going to do is um, get add. I'm going to add that git ick nor file. Okay, and now if I do get status, and by the way, you can always use your up arrows to come cycle back through. Now you can see if you noticed and if you scroll up and look, that untracked file is no longer listed, but now my readme file is. And if I do an ls, I will see that readme file is in this folder. And that's one of the things you need to be aware of is when you're doing this process, be in the correct folder. So as an example, if I had made changes uh, down in my lecture in somewhere else, uh, and again, each class has a different structure, structure of folders, uh, once they're in the repo. So just pay attention to that. So you need to be in the correct one. So now I'm going to actually do git add. And in this case, I'm going to do the read me file. And by the way, I'm using tab there to automatically uh, complete because it's going to look at whatever files that are in there. Uh, remember the other option, and I could have done this, is actually just done start, star. Okay, and star will add anything. So I could have done that to take care of both of them, but I decided to at least break it out this time and show you. Okay, so before I do the next one, I just kind of want to show you where we're at. So we did get status and then we did get add. And again, you can either add whatever files have been modified or untracked, and then you can, or you can add a specific file. Okay, so this just stages your changes into the local repo. By the way, before we go much further, I'm actually going to go over to the repo just to show you, because we're going to end up coming, we're going to publish something. Actually, we'll publish one, but we're going to publish one to the private. And we'll probably not do the public one just because we don't have time. And that's great experience for you to do. Okay. All right. So I'm going to do get status again. And now I see I have changes to commit. So I've staged, I've changed files. I've staged those com uh, changes. And now I'm going to do a git commit dash M. And now I'm going to give it a message, right? And in this case, I would say updating git or creating. I would say creating git ignore file and updating readme.md file. Okay. Now these messages, you can put whatever you want in here, but I will tell you over time, when you do this professionally, you really want to make your get uh, messages, your commit messages reflect what you're doing to let other people know kind of what's happening. So uh, the key is get space commit dash M and there's a space in there space Oh, uh, double quotes, and you got to have a double quote at the end. If you don't put a double quote at the end, it sends you into this weird, little weird area because it's like, wait a minute, what else do you want to put on that? So just make sure you do it that way. Looks like I've now committed it. And so if I scroll back through up arrow, do get status, it looks like I'm actually at the place now where I'm ready to push my code to GitHub, right? So remember, 
So just keep this in mind. So you've done changes locally, you've updated the repo locally, and now what you're gonna do is push those changes out to GitHub. And the reason I showed you this directory was so that you could see when I do this, what it looks like, okay? And watch this, anyway. So now I'm gonna clear this and we're gonna do, for the most part, this should work, let's see, git push, okay? So what git push should do, if it works, and it looks like it is, is that it's taking whatever changes I had, and again, I'm repeating myself here, but you can also notice that on the private repo, there's no more green. So green is a way that VS Code tries to help you understand what changes have been done that haven't been committed, okay? And now let's come over to VS Code, or sorry, over to GitHub, I'm going to refresh this page, and what I should see now is that git ignore file, which is awesome, and I see that updated readme file that has that, okay, on there. So this is the process, again, we're working towards, this is what you've been working towards this whole time, is getting code from your local system and pushing it to GitHub by via way of doing version control. Okay, so from here on out for this course, this is what you're going to be doing each week. You're going to be coding, and I will tell you what uh, type of commits I want you to do. Like often I will have you do a section in a, maybe a Udemy course. I think most of my classes use a Udemy course except for 82, and they don't. But regardless, you'll be doing something, and I'll say have this commit and do a commit here. And so when you see that, that's when you, if you want to remind yourself, you can come back here and look at it, right? So here's the other thing. If for some reason you run into anything at that point that didn't allow you to do a, a push and you weren't allowed to push that to um, GitHub, then you can ask, definitely ask, reach out and get some help. The next item in here actually is a discussion board just for handling those issues. Um, I will tell you one last thing before I end, is that now that you are doing this process, you should never update, and I say should never, I would never update content from out on GitHub because we know we can, right? We know we can come in here and update uh, files out in the GitHub interface, the web interface. But the point of us doing all this work is so that your source control is handled locally and then you just push your changes up to GitHub so that you can then share them with me and that, or, or with the rest of the class, depending on which repo you're doing. So great time to exercise what you've just learned by doing the same thing uh, inside of if you whichever one you didn't choose, right? So now go and create that git ignore file in the other repo. Again, if you're in 93 or 94, uh, make sure you include that and you should be good to go. All right, talk to you. I think that's it. So we'll talk to you soon. Bye.